Wallace Industrial Tools and Supplies knows Southern Illinois. Located in West Frankfort, they're your Milwaukee Superstore with over 8,000 square feet. Wallace Tools has the largest selection of Milwaukee within a two-hour radius. Find power tools such as drills, saws, lights, shop backs, and more with pricing lower than you'll find anywhere else. Wallace Industrial in West Frankfort. IBI Management manages over 2.5 million square feet of industrial storage warehousing and office space in Tennessee, Indianapolis, Ohio, Illinois, and South Carolina with 64 tenants. Please feel free to contact us for any management needed for your property. Feel free to reach out with any questions to Bobby and Iris Cazzotti. With an award-winning body shop right here in West Frankfort, Illinois, Wix is your hometown Chevrolet, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram dealer. Come out and visit us in person or online at gregweeks.com. Your hometown dealership, right on the price, right off 557. Kids Corral Incorporated, celebrating 25 years serving the children and families of Southern Illinois. Owned and operated by Gina King and Kristen Cass. Kids Corral in West Frankfort. Redbirds Live, brought to you by the partners of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates, including former West Frankfort High School dual sports standout Lance Brown and fellow West Frankfort alumni and veteran Matthew Carroll. The law firm of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates are proud members of the West Frankfort community and proud servants of all of Southern Illinois. Ask Melissa Walden about Shelters Auto, home and life options. Call or text at 618-937-2092. Melissa Walden, Shelter Insurance in West Frankfort. Contact Power Wash Plus for a free quote on all your residential or commercial pressure washing needs. Professionally operated and fully insured. Call Power Wash Plus at 618-663-2505 for more information. That's Power Wash Plus at 618-663-2505. Hal Insurance is a proud sponsor of Redbird Athletics. Serving West Frankfurt since 1925, we provide auto, home, business, life, and health insurance. Hal Insurance partners with Auto Owners Insurance Company to handle insurance the right way, the human way. Call Ryan, Jessica, or Susan Patton at 937 Four zero zero zero. Make light work of everything with Honda's top of the line family of Pioneer 1000 side by sides. All models sport a best in class engine and an exclusive six speed automatic dual clutch transmission. Then there's the 1005 models equipped with Honda's quick flip seating that seats up to five passengers. So find your next Honda Pioneer today at Bill Galatich Honda in West Frankfurt. Experience a taste of Mexico at La Fiesta Mexican restaurant. We have the best food and drinks for the whole family to enjoy. See you tomorrow, amigos. E.R. Brown Furniture has been providing West Frankfort and Southern Illinois communities quality furniture for 109 years. E.R. Furniture has the largest selection of Lazy Boy furniture and can help you find your next recliner, sofa, or loveseat. E.R. Brown Furniture can provide delivery and set up to your home as well. E.R. Brown Furniture, downtown West Frankfort. The city of West Frankfort is proud to support the students of Frankfort Community High School. The future is in the youth of our community. Go Redbirds. People's National Bank has been serving the communities of Southern Illinois since 1909. We believe that great customer service along with a wide variety of products will meet all of your banking needs. Come in and check us out today. People's National Bank, member FDIC. McDonald's, family owned and operated Moreland Bishop McDonald's has 21 locations to serve you. The West Frankfort Aquatic and Activity Center are proud partners of Redbirds Live. Come check out our heated indoor swimming pool, fitness center, and basketball gym. Stop by for a visit, or you can contact us at 618-937-1665. We thank you guys for tuning in to Redbirds Live, live from Anders Gymnasium in Duke Coins, the Duke Coin Indians. And your West Frankfurt Redbirds set for this Tuesday night match. You up here late uh, in the season. And this is Frankfurt's final attempt to impress uh, those in charge of giving them a seed for postseason basketball. Those seeds will come out Thursday. The bracket will come out Friday. I'm Garrett Smith. I welcome in Quincy King to help me on tonight's call. How's it going, Garrett? Coming into this one, man, we're looking to get back at these Indians and coming here tonight at Duke Coin and try to get a win. It was a tough one over there at home against these guys. Felt like a game that we probably should have won and 
you know, just weren't ready to play that game. Hopefully we come ready to play tonight. Yeah, it was fresh off a nice win, too, against uh, Nashville. That game you played right before that, and you end up losing against DuCoin. And um, that was final over there was 48-36. Franker couldn't hit a shot in the second half. I think Redbirds had a two-point lead maybe at halftime or something like that. And yeah. Couldn't get anything going there in the second half. Steve Wallace, Industrial Pregame Show with us here at Redbirds Live. And like I mentioned, Quincy, this is the last game you got um, before uh, – Seeds come out Thursday. You play tonight, you play again Friday, but by then you already know where you're playing their postseason. So important for yeah. Frankfurt to you know have a good showing here tonight. Yeah, looking at this one, you know, conference game gets a team we uh, we lost to at home. It's it's definitely a pretty a pretty important game. It's a big game for us, especially tonight. Like you said, in the seedings, you know, it, it could mean you know it, it just with a win here tonight could mean a, a bunch of different things that could set up a different kind of pairing that could be in our favor. A loss tonight would definitely, you know, maybe make things a little worse for us at where we stand right now. So coming in tonight and getting a win is a big necessity, and it's it's got to be preached more that we, we need to win this game tonight. And I think a loss tonight almost uh, guarantees Frankfurt will be on the road um, yeah. in that regional quarterfinal a win. And, man, you are making a case to get a home game. And if you can get that home game in the quarterfinal, well, you're already guaranteed any time you win from there you're in your home gym because the game's on those Wednesdays and Fridays, the semifinals and finals of your regional. That's the Frankfurt Regional. Those are at Frankfurt regardless of who's playing, but with the new rule that came out a couple years ago, higher seed hosts the quarterfinal game. Frankfurt wins tonight. They got a shot at being the higher seed against uh, whoever they could end up being paired up against. But a loss, I think, almost guarantees that they'd be on the road trying to work their way back to Max Morris. Let's get to the keys to the game. That's brought to you by Weeks in West Frankfurt. Yeah, I mean, keys, keys tonight, you know, coming into this conference game, we really, I think we need to focus really hard turning the ball over. It seems like that's been a really, a really negative spot in our, in our basketball play the past couple of weeks is we just turn the ball over way too much. If we can somewhat get that number down below eight, seven turnovers, I, I think this game would be much in our control as I don't think Ducoin can really – if we don't turn the ball over and we don't allow them to get a lot of second opportunities at anything, I think we can really halt, you know, some major guys like Eli May Eli My Eli Mayner and Bardo Spiller down there, you know, cleaning the glass. We really gotta put a put our basketball fundamentals on the line here tonight and you know, just do you know, make the right play, not try to rush anything. Stay mentally in the game. Don't you know, it's like let's not see let's not go back to mid-season where we're seeing Frankfurt have these really bad one quarters that really halts them in the whole game. So I think if they can, you know, fix some, tweak some little things right now and, you know, play their style of basketball because they showed us that they, were, they can be a competitive team and win games, then they can win this one tonight. They can't let Manor heat up. Uh, he, he started warming up at Max Morris tonight. He's on his home court. If he gets warm, Frankfurt could be uh, trailing quickly and by a lot. And it's another thing, Frankfurt's had a hard time. On, uh, playing games on the road. So let's see if they can uh, find a way here tonight against the, a Duke coin team that's uh, looking to go 2 0 against the Redbirds on the season. We'll pause for the national anthem and then we'll give you the starting laps.
All right, time for starting lineups. That's brought to you by Sam C. Mitchell and Associates. A minor change to the Redbirds starting lineup. You'll see Melvin go to the bench. He's been a little under the weather. That's the reports we're getting. And uh, so we'll see what role he plays here tonight. I expect him to give it a go, but he's going to come off the bench to start. For Frankfurt, here we go. Number zero, 6'2", senior, D.T. Thomas. Number three, six-foot junior, Eli Tyson. Number 25, 5'8", junior, Jack Harrell. Number 10, 6'2", sophomore, Quentin Osborne. And number 35, 6'2", senior, Keegan Bowers. It'll be Thomas, Tyson, Osborne, Harrell, and Bowers, starting for head coach Josh Sertich. And uh, we'll say it is good to see even Melvin in, out there in uniform because you mentioned and noticed earlier in the pregame uh, during that junior varsity contest he wasn't out there warming up. Yeah, I don't know if he's you know staying in the locker room trying to you know sweat something off or get some rest, but definitely feeling a little sick. Coin is led by Webster McGuire. We're going to try to get you the names as they go, but some of these names and numbers are messed up on our program. But I was looking down at my sheet here, and uh, the numbers didn't quite line up with uh, what Ducoin's marching out there. I do know they're going to start Drake Jewell, a 6'1", senior. Eli Manor, six foot senior. Dwayne Wilmington, five ten senior. And we'll work with what we got in, until we can. But uh, I don't think any of these numbers match on their program here. Yeah, no, I'm. Uh, I didn't know if I was confusing myself for a second, but I was trying to look down there and put put pieces together, and uh, confusing. Frankfurt starts with the basketball. We're underway. Tyson with it into the half court. Dribble handoff to Bowers. He works right towards left. Into the left corner. Spinning on Wilmington. Gets into the paint. Spins up with the left and banks it in. Frankfurt's on the board first with a Keegan Bowers layup. That's what we really need Bowers to be doing. He is a very good ball player when he can get a shot looking like that. Wilmington corner jumper. Quick effort to respond. Nope. Loose ball into the hands of D.T. Thomas, who hands to Bowers. 2 nothing Redbirds, 35 seconds in. Bowers point left, gives to Harrell, right side of the court. Couple dribbles, gives it up, needs help, looking, looking, finally gives Eli Tyson. Out near half court. Fumbled it, nearly stolen. Tyson got it back, lost it again, gives it Osborne. Short corner jumper up, well short. Rebound Manor. Manor looks to push. The Indians with the basketball. Corner, it's Maynard. Dribbles on Tyson. And the Indians will swing it around the perimeter. Six forty-five to go in the first. It's two nothing Redbirds. From Ducoin to the basket, up in for two. Tie game. Uh, Smith with two points. Two to two is the score. Punched out. Frankfurt's going to go into the backcourt to get it back. Bowers with the basketball. Had it knocked free. Can't get it back. Ducoin the other way. Maynard layup. Good. Four two Indians, two minutes in. And that one off a turnover. Top it's Bowers. Dribbles on Wil uh, Wilmington, and he took it away. Wilmington to the goal right side. Missed it strong. Knocked out. I don't even think the ref was ready for a call there. They're going to keep it down here. 
4-2, do coin to throw in. Here's Jewel, gets it in. Maynard in the corner. Tries to work baseline, cut off, finds Wilmington, stops, takes it top to Jewel. Now on the wing. Wilmington trying to go back door to Smith. He lost it out of bounds. Frank for basketball. Johnson's that fifth out there with Maynard, Smith, Jewell, and Wilmington. So we finally figured out who they got out there, even though these numbers are all over the place for Duke Coyne. Took me some minutes into the first quarter, but finally got him on the stat sheet. The one we didn't know was Johnson, and they actually have his number right in the program. <laughs> yeah. 5.20 to go in the first. It's 4-2, Duke Coyne, and Frankfurt's got the basketball. And Johnson, again, we've seen him do it a couple times in Wilmington. They're poking the ball out from behind Frankfurt. They're going to have to get that under control because that's already led to one basket. And fortunately for the Redbirds, that one was knocked out. You know, Duke Coyne's playing very active defense right now, and Frankfurt, too, Two turnovers very early, and one hard resulting in a basket. And you know, if a better transition offense would have resulted in another one, so it's that's how costly turnovers are against teams who can who can capitalize on them. Inbounded to Harrell, he swings at Bowers out near the middle of the court, almost in the or almost uh, ended up in a back court violation. Knocked free again. Osborne tracks it down. Back to Tyson. Works elbow. Corner. It's Harrell. He works baseline. Cut off nicely by Smith. He gives it out. Bowers. Shot fake. Knocked out. Frankfurt keeps. Knocked out by Wilmington. You're right. They've been active defensively. Frankfurt, that first possession basket. Nothing since. Here with 4.58 left in the first. Into Harrell. Swings to Osborne, point right. Osborne now swings it back to Tyson. First possession, or first dribble on the possession was Eli Tyson there. Before that, they were holding the basketball. Ends up with DT, had it knocked out, got it back, kicks it out top to Tyson. Tyson gets to the free throw line, jumper up, around and out. And the rebound to Wilmington. There's Smith, right side. Uses the screen by Jewell. Gives top to Wilmington. Dribbles towards the left. Hands to Johnson. He goes to the basket. Caught under the goal. Top, it's to Jewell. Now Smith. And he kicked it off his foot out of bounds. Frankfurt ball. 4.08 left in the first. 4-2. Slow start here. Both sides scoring the basketball. Yeah, both both offenses really trying to get something going, and Frankfurt really having a hard time with Duquoin's defense, and I think Duquoin just making some mental errors, and you know, as soon as they can try to fix that correction, you you hope Frankfurt gets back on track with their offense and doesn't come to some crazy big lead here in the fourth or something get out of way where we can't get back into this. Timeout, Frankfurt. This was brought to you by Hal Insurance. In West Frankfurt, 4.08 left in the first. Frankfurt ball out of this quick timeout as Coach Sertich trying to get his guys on the same page here. That's been the issue. They've had fits on the road and can't get in any sort of groove. And it's important right now because a lot of these games where Frankfurt's had that, their opponents struggled too out of the gates and the Redbirds haven't capitalized. Around the perimeter, left side, it's Osborne. Swings it. Harrell steps in. Triple on the way. It's no good. DT's rebound on the right block up and in. Tie ball game. Four to four. He left Thomas alone. Harrell loose on the floor. Knocked it free. Getting it back and thrown out off Bowers that time. As it was Smith who saved the possession for Ducoin. Four four. You know how Smith's looked in this uh First couple of minutes, I mean, we need to really put some pressure on him. It seems like he's kind of, you know, a little antsy with the ball right now and fumbling. Maybe we could get some turnovers on him. He's got it in the half court, fell to the floor, lost it, and gets it out to Jewel. Now Maynard, pass nearly stolen. Johnson retrieves. He dribbles towards the left corner. Here's Jewel in the corner. Back out to Johnson, elbow with its Wilmington corner. Free for three is Maynard, and he got it. One guy on the court you can't leave open, and Frankfurt didn't have anyone within 15 feet of him. 
3.15 left in the first. Oh. So one guy you can't let that happen to. And time and time again, we've seen Frankfurt allow wide open jump shooters hit threes. And I don't, I don't think there's many other shooters on this Ducoin Indian squad. I think that's the one guy you really got to worry about beyond the arc. CT out top gives to Osborne. Point right, it's Bowers. Reverse to Tyson. Now back Harrell. He'll try again. On the way, good. It's a two, a long two from Harrell. He couldn't get the foot behind the line. 7-6, Ducoin. 2-40 to go in the first. Johnson gives to Smith. Smith guarded tightly by Harrell. He works around Harrell. Into the right corner. Steps back, gives Wilmington. Point right. Guarded by Thomas. Swings to Johnson. Johnson to the point, gets to the free throw line, gives to Jewell, trying to back down Bowers, kicks out Maynard, sets the feet, three up, and a little strong, and an over the back on Johnson. They let him open again, and they, they were fortunate that he missed that one. It's the same spot where he just made one. And even in the, you know, uh, miscommunication, even in the slightest, and he's going to be able to get free because he knows you how to create even off ball. And, Frankfurt fortunate, and the foul went on Johnson, his first, team first. 2.15 to go, and Johnson took it from Tyson, and a foul on Tyson. His first, team first. 2.12, Ducoin gets it back, leading 7-6. He just took it right out of his hands, and then Tyson with the frustration foul that prevented a basket. Here's Maynard. Now right wing extended past the perimeter. Swings it. Johnson with it. Left side of the court. Gives to Jewell. Back to Johnson. 155 to go. First. DT out on Wilmington. Wilmington swings to Smith. Guarded by Harrell. Smith around Harrell. Back Wilmington. Gets underneath the goal. Goes up. Misses. Rebound. Tyson. And he got it poked free by Johnson again. Kicks out. Jewell thought about a shot. Said it's Maynard towards the basket, spins up with the right. Nope, rebound, Wilmington back up and in. Nine to six, Ducoin, and they had plenty of opportunities that trip down and sparked by Johnson, who forced two turnovers. Osborne with it, kicks corner to Tyson, shot fake. Steps in, mid-range jumper up. Nope, rebound, DT. DT back up with the right and in. Two follow-up baskets from Thomas. Here in the past few minutes, and Frankfurt's trailing it 9-8. to eight. Smith gets it across all the way to the basket, and there was no defense to be found. You know, you see you see a man get burned. You got you to gotta step over, and you got to help at least force something else instead of just a wide-open layup. Tyson triple up. Nope. Rebound. Thomas got another offensive rebound. DT in the corner. Needs some help. Gives it out. Bowers stayed in bounds. They hit off the official. Frankfurt loses it out of bounds off the pass from Thomas to Bowers. 40 seconds left in the first. Ducoin up 11 to 8. We got a sub for Ducoin. Here's Wilmington. Throws it Maynard, falling away in the paint, shot up and in. 13-8, Frankfurt back with it with 20 seconds, trailing by five. Melvin in first time for the Redbirds and a reach in against the Indians. That's Jeremiah Jones who subbed in, that's his first. Melvin in the backcourt. Dribbles on Jones, got it around him, goes into the paint, kicks to Harrell, had a look, goes DT, works towards the basket, back out Harrell, three for three in the corner, up and around, nope, Osborne back at the buzzer, he got it for two. So, uh, rebound baskets keeping Frankfurt in this one, they trail at 13-10 through one. We pause to hear from some of our sponsors. Ask Melissa Walden about Shelters Auto, home and life options. Call or text at 618-937-2092. 
Melissa Walton, Shelter Insurance in West Frankfurt. IBI Management manages over 2.5 million square feet of industrial storage warehousing and office space in Tennessee, Indianapolis, Ohio, Illinois, and South Carolina with 64 tenants. Please feel free to contact us for any management needed for your property. Feel free to reach out with any questions to Bobby and Iris Gazzotti. The City of West Frankfurt is proud to support the students of Frankfurt Community High School. The future is in the youth of our community. Go Redbirds! Kids Corral Incorporated, celebrating 25 years serving the children and families of Southern Illinois. Owned and operated by Gina King and Kristen Cass. Kids Corral in West Frankfurt. Quarter two just underway, and it's Duke Coyne leading West Frankfurt 13 to 10, and they begin with the basketball. Here's Smith on the wing, guarded by Harrell. Gives top to Wilmington, swings to Johnson, looking inside, layup up, around and out from Jones, knocked free, and to the hands of Osborne for Frankfurt. And he was wide open underneath, couldn't get it to go. Top, it's Osborne, sets the feet, triple up, around and out, rebound pulled down by Johnson, and Frankfurt's not hitting their open looks. Johnson off the dribble, gives to Jones. Forty seconds in quarter two. It's 13-10 to coin. Here's Smith out top. Swings to Johnson. Now top it's Maynard with it. 50 seconds in quarter two. Jones trying to get it into Wilmington. Nothing there. Jones dribbles to the point. Gives to Smith on the wing. Back to Maynard. He'll try three on the way. Good. Sixteen ten, six forty five left. Melvin to the basket. He's fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. And they got that one on Wilmington, his first. Team first. Six forty four to go. Quarter two. It's sixteen ten Duke Coin. Melvin will shoot two free throws. First one up, first one no good. Tyson back in and for Harrell. One more here at the line from Melvin. Free throw up. Made one of two. Redbirds trailing by five. Smith into the half court. Gives Maynard. He works into the corner. Skips it out of the corner. It's picked off by Tyson. He looks to go the other way to get two. He gets it up off the... Backboard past Jones. He missed it, but a follow-up two from Bowers. 16-13. Two points in transition from Frankfurt off the turnover. Smith, he throws it away. Picked off by DT off the deflection. Gives to Bowers. Bowers to the free throw line. Spins, stops in the paint. Up with the right. Back iron, no. Got his own follow-up. Missed it. And it's tap free to Maynard. Skipped ahead, it's Johnson. He works around Tyson, lost it on the floor. Tie up. Oh, well, they call timeout. Timeout granted quickly to McG Coach McGuire and DuCoin. 5.56 left. First half at 16.13. Indians on top of the Redbirds. Timeout brought to you by La Fiesta Mexican Restaurant in West Frankfurt. Now Frankfurt's starting to force some turnovers and it's important to cash in on these trips down. You know, they did on the one, and then this last one uh, had some good looks, and they couldn't get it to go. Yeah, what we're really doing right now is uh, something that Ducoin looks very uncomfortable with. Not not taking care of the ball as well as they have been. That we, you know, we forced some really good turnovers, and, you know, you see what happens when you can play. You play, you know, up in their face defense, and you start, start you know, pushing the pace and setting a, your own standpoint on how fast and how slow you want this game to go, start taking control more. And it's it's a really positive thing. You really start to see uh, a lot of a lot of good things start happening for you. Out of the timeout. Two coin with it. Johnson gives to Smith. Back to Johnson, deflected. Smith gets it back, splits a pair, goes towards the basket, and he's got an easy layup. And he's done that two different times where no one cuts him off. 
two easy baskets from Smith. Knocked out. And they're going to say Melvin lost it. 5.32 left first half. You got to get a guy in front of, <laughs> I mean, Smith, you're right, he's had issues. But when he starts dribbling the ball, no one cuts him off. Wilmington, he's free at the goal for an easy two. I'd say these shots, it's like we don't even want to guard anybody if they get in the paint. Osborne lost it. Maynard took it right from him. He works middle of the court. Gives top to Smith to the goal. Two more. That's three baskets right at the goal in a row from Ducoin in the lead is nine. And it's not looked good defensively from Frankfurt these last three trips since that timeout. 4.51 left first half. Timeout or uh, stoppage here. A whistle against Ducoin. That's Manners first. Frankfurt will throw in on the side. Taking a while to get this ball in. Here we go, Quincy. I've seen that quite a bit this year. Yeah, it's about, yeah. Uh, almost seems like it's... Uh, Kind of a slower, slower pace in between game action. Tyson knocked to the floor, knocked out. 4:37 left, first half. Frankfurt to throw in underneath. Going to be Tyson throwing it in. Gets it into Thomas. Bounces top to Bowers. Bowers, crossover dribble, lost it, got it back. Finds Thomas under the goal, and he lost it. It goes out. Frankfurt keeps. 424 left first half. They're playing with fire. Every trip down, seems like Frankfurt's at risk can turn the basketball over. Yeah, it just seems like they're not comfortable with the ball right now, and it's forcing a lot of, a lot of mistakes. There's Melvin, point left. He gets to the free throw line. Spinning, he's just going to go up with it. No good. Got his own rebound for two. Sometimes Brady Melvin's best offense is just throw it at the goal and go get your own rebound. You know, with how, how athletic he is, it's a, I don't say do it, do it a little bit more. 22-15. Manners got it. He throws it to Jack Harrell, who's sitting on the Redbird bench. Frankfurt ball, 4-0-1 left first half. Twenty-two fifteen, Duke Coin. A good final four minutes here from the Redbirds. They continue to struggle scoring the ball on the road. Corner, it's Osborne. Back wing with it's Melvin. Top, it's Tyson. Takes left, goes right to Melvin. Right back, Tyson. Had a look, throws it up, and missed it off to the right. Rebound to Johnson for Ducoin. Crossover dribble, kicks out Wilmington. He'll throw up a triple. No good. Offensive rebound, Smith. Kicks out Johnson. Wing three, way off. And rebound, Melvin. He works middle of the floor. Round Jones towards the basket. And they're going to get him for an offensive foul with 3.18 left in the first half. No, Garrett, I'm not really sure how you can even call that. That's an athletic play from Brady Melvin, and he's just stronger than the defender. And, the, and it was, I think it was Jones who just just bounced off it. It's not like he was setting up for a charge. No, he, was, he just bounced off it and continued to try to play defense. Jones cut off in the short corner, skipped wide open Maynard three up and long. Pulled down Bowers. Three minutes left first half. Bowers had it taken away, got it back. Bowers gives Melvin. He lost it. And this is... Ducoin has picked Frankfurt's pockets the entire game. And we've seen those back tips the entire way, and Frankfurt's not slowing it down at all. 24-15. Melvin knocked free again. 
loose. Johnson for two, missed it, rebound Bowers. Out to Tyson. Tyson has it right sideline. Gives it out to Melvin. 220 left. Swings to Bowers. Thought about a shot, didn't take it. Frankfurt trailing by nine. Quincy, they're going to figure something out. It, nothing's changing right now in terms of those tips. Bowers free for three, and he's got it. You know, DuCoin's picking the pace of the game, and they have it right where they want it. They're getting enough touches on the ball to force us to have bad offensive possessions. And they leave him open again. Manor for three. You, I mean, I, you can't switch off him. If you're stuck on him, you have to stay on him or else he's going to have a wide open look. And it happened there. Can't just leave him when he's got no one in front of him sitting at the three-point line. 27-18. Well, yeah. Shots like that should just never happen, especially with how good of a shooter he is. So the Bowers three is wiped out by Maynor. Nine-point Ducoin lead. 120 left first half. Top it's Wilmington. Now Jones, guarded by Osborne. Jones gives to Smith. Smith guarded by Tyson. Smith, there's that layup again. I don't know what it is with Smith, but whenever he gets around his defender, they just say, all right, we'll give you a layup. It's happened three times. It's 29-18. Corner Osborne, 50 seconds left first half. Osborne in front of the goal, throws it in. Three separate times they've let Smith do that. Yeah, I, I don't understand. There's there's no defense when he gets past that first line defense. No Ma one's sliding over. If you're Coach McGuire, say, hey, bud, beat your guy, and they're letting you get a layup. Every time. Wilmington right side, half a minute left, first half. Smith has it out top. Pass deflected into the hands of Jones. Now top is Johnson. Johnson guarded by Melvin. Johnson kicks corner to Smith. It's been his half off the dribble. Can he hit one from the perimeter? No, 10 seconds. Melvin with it. Frankfurt in need of a basket. He works sideline, trapped, nearly throws it away. Five seconds, Bowers dumps it off. Thomas is fouled going up, and that's a good foul from Smith, who came over in what would have been an easy layup to close the half, and he says, ah, DT, I'm going to make you earn it at the line. Thomas shooting two. And that's the first on Smith. And DT hits the first. Harrell in for Melvin. Go forth in for Tyson. Two seconds, and DT hits them both. So he ends up cashing in. Two seconds here. Maynard heaves it down the floor. Off the backboard. No good. New coin out ahead. They've led it for the most of this first half. 29-22, Frankfurt needs to start taking care of the basketball, and they got to put a hand up in Eli Manor's face. And uh, I think Frankfurt's fortunate to be within seven. 29-22, we pause to hear from some of our sponsors. Come back with a halftime report. Insurance is a proud sponsor of Reverend Athletics. Serving West Frankfurt since 1925, we provide auto, home, business, life, and health insurance. Howell Insurance partners with Auto Owners Insurance Company to handle insurance the right way, the human way. Call Ryan, Jessica, or Susan Patton at 937-4000. Contact Power Wash Plus for a free quote on all your residential or commercial pressure washing needs. Professionally operated and fully insured. Call Power Wash Plus at 618-663-2505 for more information. That's Power Wash Plus at 618-663-2505. Kids Corral Incorporated, celebrating 25 years serving the children and families of Southern Illinois. Owned and operated by Gina King and Kristen Cass. Kids Corral in West Frankfurt. 
Redbirds Live, brought to you by the partners of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates, including former West Frankfurt High School dual sports standout Lance Brown, fellow West Frankfurt alumni and veteran Matthew Carroll. The law firm of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates are proud members of the West Frankfurt community and proud servants of all Southern Illinois. IBI Management manages over 2.5 million square feet of industrial storage warehousing and office space in Tennessee, Indianapolis, Ohio, Illinois, and South Carolina with 64 tenants. Please feel free to contact us for any management needed for your property. Feel free to reach out with any questions to Bobby and Iris Cazada. Wallace Industrial Tools and Supplies knows Southern Illinois. Located in West Frankfort, they're your Milwaukee Superstore with over 8,000 square feet. Wallace Tools has the largest selection of Milwaukee within a two-hour radius. Find power tools such as drills, saw, lights, shop backs, and more with pricing lower than you'll find anywhere else. Wallace Industrial in West Frankfort. Experience a taste of Mexico at La Fiesta Mexican Restaurant. We have the best food and drinks for the whole family to enjoy. See you tomorrow, amigos. With an award-winning body shop right here in West Frankfort, Illinois, it's your hometown Chevrolet, Kinsey, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram dealer. Come out and visit us in person or online at gregweeks.com. Your hometown dealership, right in the price, right off 557. The city of West Frankfort is proud to support the students of Frankfort Community High School. The future is in the youth of our community. Go Redbirds. Ask Melissa Walden about Shelters Auto, home and life options. Call or text at 618-937-2092. Melissa Walden, Shelter Insurance in West Frankfurt. We welcome you guys in. It's the halftime show brought to you by Kids Corral. At the half, 29-22, Duke Coin on top of West Frankfurt. Let's get to the halftime stat sheet brought to you by the city of West Frankfurt. We'll start with the Indians of Duke Coin. Start off with Johnson with two, Wilmington four, Smith with ten. Round scoring for the Indians, Maynard with 13. Indians had a total of six turnovers in the first half. Move over to your West Frankfurt Redbird side. Jack Harrell with two. Brady Melvin with three. 
Osborne with four, DT Thomas with six, and around the scoring for the Redbirds, Redbirds Bowers with seven. Redbirds had a total of nine turnovers in the first half. Yeah, and Frankfurt shot three of four at the line, including those two down at the very end with a couple seconds left from DT, so it was important there. Frankfurt closed the half on, um, I think, a 4-0 run there after trailing by 11 to get it within seven, and that was important uh, to get it within single digits and um, feel a little bit better about it, and you start with the ball out of the half. Ducoin didn't get to the line, and that's kind of expected from the, the style they play. They try to get Maynard free to shoot threes, and they've done that. They've not been super physical. And um, so with a team that's going to shoot jump shots and a team that's not super physical, you don't expect a lot of free throws. That's been the case for Ducoin, O of O at the line. But, I, I mean, they've got to find a way to get a hand up on uh, Maynard. And they've got to – I think these past couple times it's – it's when Smith has gotten to the goal, it's been Tyson on him. And it, it, once he gets past that first offense, they, they don't really step over and try to close him off. When he's got a little bit of momentum, he's, he's pretty crafty getting to the goal, but he's, he's undersized enough to where you would think you cut him off, he's just going to retreat and kick it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was, I knew he had a couple. A couple right there at the goal, three or four layups. You mentioned, though, 10 points. Um, that's got to be a big bonus for for Coach McGuire's side. Not expecting that, especially from Smith all at the basket. Yeah, you know, I think he shot maybe maybe two threes. I know he shot one. I don't know about two. But, you know, if any game plan is being talked about right now on Smith, it's, you know, just don't – you sag off a little bit. You try to dare him almost to shoot a three, and you sag off a little bit. You just – say do not let him get around you and you got to have help defense when he if he does because he's getting to the basket at will right now and we're almost just letting him go and get right in there you know 10 points for smith that is huge right now for the indians about him and mayor maynard combined for 23 points of 29 those are the two guys who've really been the offensive targets right now and you know the other guys have just been really in there you know trying to get trying to get tips and trying to get deflections off the ball and go down for some easy layups, which they've been doing a better, a pretty good job of tonight. Uh, Redbirds a lot better of out-rebounding their opponent, 14-9 to nine on rebounds. That's that's a bright spot you can look at in a game like this, but it's almost like, you know, uh, rebounds like that, only five, and with the, the amount that you've turned over the ball, it's, it's kind of evening out right now, and that's how you're down seven. Yep, before we pick up second half play, our broadcast schedule the remainder of the week after tonight, Thursday. We're at home with the Lady Redbirds for senior night against Massac County. Friday, we're at home with the boys against Benton. Saturday, we had two Benton Lady Redbirds up against the, the Rangerettes in the regional quarterfinal game. That's the part of the Frankfurt Regional. But Frankfurt will be on the road, even though it's their regional, with Benton being a higher seed. That's our schedule through the week. Ready for second half play. Frankfurt starts with a big first possession here, I think, to get um, get a little closer because seven's not fun to be down by, but um, seven feels like a lot more if you're down seven in the third quarter compared to maybe the first or second. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's a lot better word down seven right now, not 11. Like, how it was looking there for to close out the second for a little bit, it was not looking good. Here we go. Frankfurt starts with it. It's Tyson with the basketball. Out top, swings to Harrell on the wing. Looking, gives to DT out top. Now Tyson bounces Bowers, working to the right block. Goes around his man, and he's fouled going up. He'll shoot two. Had a clean look at it, but he's going to go to the line to shoot two. 19 seconds in, quarter three. It's 29-22. Ducoin on top. And they get Jones for his second. Bowers shooting two here. Going to cut into that deficit. Frankfurt out there with their starters. First one up from Bowers is good. Ducoin out there with starters minus Jewel. In his spot, it's Jones who got that second foul moments ago. Bowers, 2-2, two two, that trip. A very important two points to start this second half. It's 29-24. Out top, it's Johnson. Gives to Jones on the wing. Around Bowers. Gets 
Out point gives Wilmington. Backdoor throws. It's knocked loose. Maynard ends up with it. Left side of the floor and a foul called on Eli Tyson. Blocking foul on Tyson. His second. Team first here in the third. Jones to throw in. Quickly to Manor. Floats it up and in. Bowers dribbles, gives to Harrell. Harrell spins at the elbow, looking back door, nothing there. Needs help, skips opposite side to Osborne. Osborne into the paint with the right, missed it short. Rebound, Wilmington. Clean look. And left short yet again from Frankfurt. Seven-point deficit. Maynard walks it across. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a comfortable look for Osborne, and definitely not upset with him taking a shot like that. Smith, first touch of the half, gives up Johnson. Back top, it's Wilmington. Swings right side, Smith, guarded by Harrell. Goes baseline on him, stops at the right block, looks to get rid of it, gives Wilmington. Wilmington back to Smith. Six and a half to go, quarter three. Now it's caught Maynard, right corner, guarded by Thomas. And Maynard, terrible pass, and he gets it back off the deflection. Frankfurt couldn't control. Instead, layup out of control this time was Johnson. Bauer skips ahead. Tyson finds Thomas to the goal with two on the right side. Johnson into the half court. 31-26, Duke Hoyne. Here's Smith. Corner, it's Jones. Works baseline. Layup missed short. Rebound, Bowers. Frankfurt fortunate again as Jones got all the way to the rack. Finds Tyson under the goal. Tough catch. Missed the layup badly. 5.45 left quarter three. Would have been another clean look if Frankfurt could have got that one to go. And would have got it within a deficit. Instead, it's Smith in the paint. Stop, cut off, kicks out. Here's Johnson out top. Crossover dribble gives up to Jones on the wing. Uses a screen from Wilmington. Jones now finds Smith right corner. Using a screen from Manor. Goes opposite way to the basket. Jones. Cut off, Wilmington's layup short, got his own rebound. He's bumped and he scored. Misses a point blank layup and he scores on the next one when he gets fouled. Yeah, worst case scenario. That's a that's a rebound you have to have after missing a layup like that. And, you know, he was in a good position to go up and grab it and definitely do not foul after a second one with the position he had. Free throw, no good, 33-26. Turning baskets won't get it done right now. That's what they've done here to start this half. Harrell into the corner. He's fouled. Tripped up that time by Johnson. Johnson second, team second. Melvin's in for Thomas. Frankfurt's going small here. Tyson to get it in, gets it in to Melvin. 4.50 to go, quarter three. Tyson towards the left, dribble handoff to Harrell. Top Osborne, wing it's Melvin. Top it's Bowers. Shot fake, swings wing to Tyson. Looking inside, nothing. Top it's Harrell. Now Bowers, right block, backing down on Wilmington. Taken away by Jones. Got Melvin gets it right back. He loses it. He's loose on the floor. Lenny is going to be... For the travel, Frankfurt gets a timeout. 4.34 left in the third. 33-26. Ducoin on top. This timeout brought to you by Power Wash Plus. Frankfurt missing some chances here, but Ducoin's had a comfortable lead around 7 to 10 in that range uh, since middle of the first, or late in the first, and... Um, the Redbirds unable to, you know, make a run at it, and that, that that's hard to it's hard to make a run when you can't hit any jump shots and you know get some threes to fall. But you got to find a way, right? I mean, you got to find a way here, and you got to take care of the ball, or else you can't get clean looks. Um, it's hard to score if you turn it over. Yeah, you know, turn turn the ball over. That's 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 a killer for every team. Try to preach it all year. 
and you know when the offense isn't falling, you you, you got to find a way. And there's there's always if there's a will, there's always a way to win a game. There's always and that's anything in life. And you got to have that will to want to win right now. 4:25 left in the third. Top it's Osborne swings wing. Osborne threw it away. Layup for Johnson. That was right to the defender. Yeah, you can't get more simple than that. I mean, that's just giving DuCoin another basket. Melvin, right block up and in for two. It's funny, Frankfurt gives up a basket to get it to nine, and then they just come down with an easy score. But when they get a stop, it's when they have their issues scoring the ball. Johnson, baseline, beat Osborne badly and somehow missed the layup. And he burnt Osborne that time again and just couldn't get the finish. Melvin out top, gives Tyson. He's into the paint, kicks out Harrell. Harrell works it towards the right or towards the left of the lane, and the ball away jumpers off. Smith in the half court, three and a half to go in the third. Jones, left corner, gives Maynard wide open, triple up and in. Pretty simple offense if you're not going to guard him for Ducoin. Just give him the ball, let him shoot. 38 28. Melvin through the lane. There's two. Yeah, I don't know if there's been any game plan discussed about Maynard, but it's still wide open threes. And, you know, he's up to 18 points now. Johnson gives to Jones, left side, uses the screen. He's left free. Wilmington throws it to Harrell. Harold didn't know where the ball was, and it ends up with Smith for two. You know where the ball's at. That's an easy pick the other way. It was thrown right to him, and Smith was patient, let it fall to him, and he laid it up. Bowers gives corner to Harold. Tyson sets up for three. On the way, needed, and they don't get it. Pulled down Wilmington. Frankfurt's ice cold from back behind the perimeter, and Jones beats everyone back down the floor for two, and the lead is 12, and Duke Coyne's looking to run away with it. Yeah, DuPont's just taking advantage of anything, you know, we do wrong. Just uh, bad offense results in DuCoin going down and turning something positive into it for them. 42-30, Frankfurt's largest deficit. Here's Harrell, sets the feet, three up, missed it short. Now we're settling, Garrett. Manor gives up Jones. He thought about it. He works towards the basket. Easy two. And... Timeout, 44-30. And another thing I noticed when Harold shot that three, um, if you looked at the other Redbirds, they just kind of stood there and watched it. And the ball actually bounced free to where, you know, if someone's active, they're getting an offensive rebound. Wasn't the case. Frankfurt's caught watching. DuCoin's with another basket. It's 44-30, 154 left in the third. And um, not a great effort, I wouldn't say. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I Trying to be honest, and um, not Frankfurt's finest effort in a big game when I could have gotten a home game if you win tonight. And um, I think a, a loss all but snuffs that idea out of question. I don't think there's any way they get one with a loss. And, you know, that, that might not be a conversation you have as a coach with a team, but it should be. Hey, guys, if you win this game, we're being considered to get a home game in the regional. Well, yeah, I think that's a lot of good motivation that you could give your players coming into a game like this tonight. And, and I, you know, I agree with you 100%. There's, you know, coming in this third quarter, it's, things were looking good kind of starting in the beginning. And then, you know, when things start getting hard for them, it seems like, yeah, you know, let's just, let's just coast through most, you know, go through a, let's just coast through in this one. Let's just, you know, let it go. And, and we talked about it in the break, how – tough it is for Frankfurt to win on the road. No true road wins mm -hmm. on the season, which is beating a team at their gym. Frankfurt's not done it. You feel a lot more comfortable playing at your home court in a regional, but tough uh, or a tall mountain to climb here to have a chance to win this one. Tyson almost traveled. Instead, he Jump stops at the goal, and he scores, and he's fouled. First points of the game for Eli Tyson coming in third. Third foul on Johnson. Tyson's at the line shooting one.
Jaden Davis checks in. Purdue Coyne, his first time in the ball game. Number one on the program on the uh, roster that they give us here. Number four out there on the court. Tyson's free throw. Nope. Jones lost it underneath. And Bowers misses on a rebound layup attempt. Other way, it's Maynard. Skips it right into the hands of Bowers. Bowers, middle of the court, looks to go at the goal. He does left side for two. One ten left, quarter three. Frankfurt trailing by ten. Good couple of possessions in a row, but they need to start stringing them together. Timeout called Duke Coin. 101 left in the third. Frankfurt trailing by 10. Good effort here, but yeah, that, I mean, you can't let up. I mean, we've seen a Duke Coin team be a little, uh, you know, a step ahead of Frankfurt, it seems like, the entire game. And, you know, they're coming out. They've got reason to play, too. I mean, they're a team that's trying to get a home game over, and they're a different subsectional than, than Frankfurt. But still, I mean, every game matters. And there's been so many games this year where we could have, you know, it's one, it's one of those uh, – Shoulda, coulda, woulda games where, you know, you win it. And um, the Redbirds are in a lot better spot than where they're in coming into tonight. I think the same probably can be said for Duke Coyne. These teams are very similar in the type of seasons they've had. But when these two have met this season, Duke Coyne has gotten the better of Frankfurt. Yeah, it seems like they, you know, they really had Frankfurt's number uh, in that first contest. And even tonight, it seems like, you know, they almost know what we're going to do with it. And, you know, Hats off to them. Very active defensive night. and you, you can't be disappointed as where they stand right now. Davis on the wing. Guarded by Harrell. We're under a minute left. Third, and they leave Manor for three. I, I'd say you'll learn sooner or later, but I don't know if they will. They keep letting them have wide open looks, and and he keeps cashing in. He's not going to miss. I mean, he's not going to miss on his home court that he's played at for four years when he's already a good shooter, and Tyson throws it away. It's Jones right side up for two. Yeah, you would think it would, uh, He you shot know, the lights out of Max Moore. Yeah. He's going to do it here. Well, that's what I was about to say, what he did over in Frankfurt. Coming tonight, that should have been the game plan from the start. It's no open threes, no threes at all. The lead is back to 15 after that stoppage. DT for two on the left block. DT's looked nice here tonight. In limited minutes, Maynard nearly gets picked off. We're down under 10. Jones sets for a triple. Almost banked it in. Down to three. Bowers with time. Two around his man. Half court heave at the buzzer. Is off the backboard, off the front of the rim, and no good. It's 49-36. Frankfurt's got work to do in the fourth. Redbirds Live, brought to you by the partners of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates, including former West Frankfurt High School dual sports standout Lance Brown and fellow West Frankfurt alumni and veteran Matthew Carroll. The law firm of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates are proud members of the West Frankfurt community and proud servants of all of Southern Illinois. Wallace Industrial Tools and Supplies knows Southern Illinois. Located in West Frankfurt, they're your Milwaukee superstore with over 8,000 square feet. Wallace Tools has the largest selection of Milwaukee within a two-hour radius. Find power tools such as drills, saws, lights, shop backs, and more with pricing lower than you'll find anywhere else. Wallace Industrial in West Frankfort. With an award-winning body shop right here in West Frankfort, Illinois, which is your hometown Chevrolet, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram dealer. Come out and visit us in person or online at gregweeks.com. Your hometown dealership right on the price right off 557. Final eight minutes for Frankfurt to try to mount the comeback here, trailing at 49-36 on the road at Duke Coin. The Indians have led the majority of this contest. Johnson's pass is deflected out to Wilmington. Frankfurt starts 
their starters, minus Osborne, to go forth in his spot. Here's Davis with the ball. Gives up Jones. Swings perimeter to Johnson on the wing. Step back. No shot. Maynard, he's in the corner. Dribbles around Tyson. Gets to the goal. Up with the right hand for two. You know, good good defense isn't good enough on a guy like him. Mm-hmm. You can't allow a shot to go up. You you have to force him to make to make passes. You, you have to force it out of his hands. He shoots it, especially tonight. It seems like he's getting any roll. Yeah, you know he's up to 23 points right now, and you know he has had a good game offensively. And I'd like to see his field goal percentage because it's looking pretty good right now. Bowers will shoot two. Foul on Maynard, his second. First one on the way, short. One more here from Bowers at the line. Frankfurt trailing by 15. Free throw up, free throw good. Made one of two. 51 37. Here's Jones. Skips opposite side Maynard. Reverses to Johnson. They send two at Johnson. Corner it's Jones. Jones baseline. Kicks out Davis. Wide open wing. Triple up. Back iron. Nope. Rebound. DT throws it off Wilmington. Right to Jones for a layup. Missed it. Knocked loose to Thomas. Gives up Bowers. I don't know if we can be sending two at Johnson with Maynard on the court. <laughs> this is kind of odd to me. I don't think Johnson's done a whole lot. He's got four points. Yeah, no, I don't know if they're trying to play. They're trying to, you know, force some stuff, but you send two at him, and it's, all it takes is one pass, and then defense is. Right, and it seems like that's what they're trying to do, but you don't have that luxury when you got a guy like Manor out there. You have to play true. I mean, you can't go two on him mm. in him being Johnson. Two up for Bowers. It's good. Johnson, crossover dribble, kicks right to Davis. Tough catch, he's able to get it. Gives it corner. Jules, shot is long, knocked loose, out of bounds. Frank for ball, 6.27 left. Yeah, because it's, it's different. It's not like you're playing just a team that's got very similar guards where you can send two guys at. Johnson and Maynor aren't the same player. In, in terms of jump shooting, and that that is a big risk, sending two away from the guy who's torching you here tonight. Mm-hmm. Melvin into the paint, spinning, up with the left through contact, got it to go. 51-41, Frankfurt within 10. Five in a row. Two at Johnson again, gets rid of it to Davis. Davis, two at him, it's Maynard. Into the paint, kicks out, Jones. Around the perimeter, ends up Johnson left side. Here's Davis, off the drive, out to Johnson. Davis, left block up, missed short rebound, Melvin. Melvin skips ahead to Tyson. Tyson, around his man for two. He waited for Jones to blow by. It's 51-43, 5.39 left. Mini run from the Redbirds to get this within eight. And they needed it. They did it quick. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, in the span of a minute, minute and a half, and they brought this thing within eight. Definitely a good run for the Redbirds. And hopefully, you know, coming out of this timeout, they can keep it up. Seem, seemingly over the season, they've had some uh, had some trouble with, you know, getting a little momentum swing, and then just some, even something a little minor just cuts it all off for them. And the sending two has worked to this point, and it's been because DuCoin's not giving the ball to Manor for whatever reason. The last possession, you were looking right at him. He's wide open in the corner. Um, if you're Coach uh, Webster McGuire, you got to be telling your guys, they send to find a way to get the ball to number 33. And he'll make good things happen. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you see when he gets the ball, you know, he, he's either going to shoot that three or, you know, he got someone coming for him. He cuts to the basket. He creates good things for him. And, you know, when you, when you got someone like that, you know, all defensive eyes are really on that player, and it causes a lot of good looks for other guys when you can get it to that player, you know. You know, Johnson does a decent job dribbling out of trouble. Um, 
you don't hate him having the ball. I, but I think I'm letting Maynard bring it up. They're taking him out of the play right now. Frankfurt is. And you let a guy like that bring it up, then you can force it out of his hands. But I'm at least letting him touch it each possession, I think, if you're Ducoin. Mm -hmm. Jones on the wing. Now Johnson. Send two at him. Here's Jones. Picks up the dribble. End up Wilmington short corner jumper is good. And that's a shot you'll live with. Wilmington hits it, but you'll live with that jumper there. Quick shot. And Ducoin really didn't have to do anything, and Wilmington takes it away from Bowers. You know, miscommunication. No one no one spoke up and said what was going on. Maynard's going to the line. 5.03 left. Lead is back to 10. Fouls on Thomas. His second. Team first here in the fourth. Eli Manor will shoot two. I don't remember watching Eli shoot free throws at Frankfurt, but I'm going to assume he's a very good free throw shooter. That would be the assumption on how this, on how he shot here and there. First one's good. 54-43. One more on the way. He'll never miss this, will he? Okay, I tried. We made them both. Broadcast Jinx did not get him that time. The Jinx can't get a good, uh, a really good shooter, I guess. 55-43. Melvin left of the lane. Gives Bowers three on the way. Around and out. Rebound Wilmington. Wilmington skips it ahead to Manor. Walks into the half court. Manor through traffic. Pass in. Johnson it ends up Wilmington left block got bumped by Thomas rebound foul underneath and they call it on Melvin you get Melvin there right now they fix it they say it's on, well, they got Wilmington's number listed. All right, they say it's second on Wilmington. Originally, they were signaling it like it was on Melvin. I, I wasn't sure how they could make a call like that. If it was on Melvin. Melvin brings it across. Dribbles on Maynard. Gets into the paint. Left block. He's fouled, and he banked it in. 4.25 left. Frankfurt have a punch in him left here, trailing by 10. Melvin's going to the line to shoot one. It's the third on Maynard. Harrell's coming out. Go forth back in. Melvin, one at the line here. Free throw up, free throw way short. Barely grazes the rim. 55-45. Johnson gets it across, corner, it's Maynor. Fakes the pass through the lane, now gives one into Johnson. He's caught up in the middle of the lane, gives it out Jones. Smith, right side, goes to the basket, rebound Thomas. That's another, uh, you're the coin, no reason to shoot right now. Yeah, you know, waste some time off this clock and get this thing low or force us not to make a comeback. Bowers pass in traffic is picked off. Other way, Maynor towards the goal. And a charge on Manor, his fourth. Tyson was there for, for a while. They were waiting for that. 3.50 left. Harrell back in. Once again, I'm not sure why Ducoin's pushing the envelope here. Pull it out, run some clock. Instead, past couple trips, Manor's picked up two fouls, and all of a sudden he's got four. I'd like to see this Ducoin team without him out there and see how they how they act. Melvin walked. Three forty one left. You know, it seems like sometimes we can get all the opportunities in the world and we only can make shots when the other team scored. Frankfurt with some pressure, not a whole lot of it. Ducoin gets across easily. Wilmington ends up corner. It's Maynard. Wilmington under the basket for two. Melvin out top, crossover dribble, kicks out, go for it. Now Bowers. Bowers dribbles into the paint. 
Layup up and in through the reverse. He got popped. A timeout called. 57-47, 3.16 left. Frankfurt timeout. And they're running out of time right now. I think the fouls on Manor are kind of irrelevant. He's got four. But you're still allowing them to score. And you got to be able to stop them the rest of the way. And, and it's still... And still uh, find a way to score on your own. It, it, it's, it's a tough thing to do. And I don't think they can. I don't think if you're Frankfurt, you can allow them any more points. I think 57 probably gonna have to be cut off. Get up. Duke coin gets up to 60. The game's probably over. Yeah, you're going to have to really grind on defense. And you know, luckily for us, Duke coin's still trying to score the ball right now. And you know, kind of, kind of act like this is a close game for them when you know they could easily run some clock here and make this really out of reach for us. But hopefully they can keep doing that. And, you know, we, we you, you got to grind on defense for these last three minutes. That's what's going to take to get back into this one. You have to play defense. You have to you have to force turnovers, get deflections, whatever you can to get the ball back, and go score it. Frankfurt pressure in the full court, and Jones easily gets across. Maynard, right side. He's going to go to the basket. Lost it out of bounds. Out off Frankfurt. 3.09 left. I know you don't want Duke Coin scoring, but you definitely want them shooting. And you just want some misses here. This one's knocked out again. Indians keep going right at the goal, and that's planned towards Frankfurt's chances. Thrown in, here's Johnson. Corner, it's Wilmington. He throws it. It's DT who knocked it out. He couldn't secure it and keep it in. 3.03 left. Jones to throw in underneath. Has Smith in the corner. Kicks out of the corner to Johnson. Reverses. Back to Johnson underneath. Wilmington lost it straight out of bounds. Thomas didn't touch it, and it was knocked out. Ducoin keeps. 2.55 left. Jones throws in. Corner, it's Jones. They leave him free. Top, it's Smith. And a whistle again after the play. 2.50 left like a technical call. The technical against Wilmington. I think they got a personal foul on the play against Bowers. So Frankfurt will get free throws. Two up. Free throw. Got it. Fifty-seven forty-eight. He's got one more. Jewel is back in. Harold's back in. Wilmington takes a seat. Goforth takes a seat. Tyson's free throw on the way. Missed it short. A lot of missed shots short here from Frankfurt. 57-48, frame for ball. 2.50 left. Tyson into Melvin. Melvin out top, dribble move, stripped away. So Frankfurt, after technical, all they can come away with is one point. Rebound, Bowers, and he turns it over. Smith, free throw line, goes up. I'm not sure. Duke Coyne gets a basket there from Smith. I'm not sure what they're trying to do right now <laughs> offensively, though. They just keep throwing the ball up. DT, left block. Through contact, he's fouled. He'll go to the line. I have no idea. You know, it, you know, you would think a, you know, a smart team and a team who's maybe you know been in this situation a lot in the year would 
definitely bring the ball up and, you know, and slow down the offense, really run clock. And, you know, they're giving us a lot of opportunities to yeah. try to get back into it. Doesn't seem like it's going to matter. Franklin no. can't score. 226 left. Missed opportunities all year long for Franklin. 59-48. One more here from Thomas at the line. Uh, in a game like this, trailing, you, a technical where you get free throws and then the ball, you, one point's not enough. You're going to no. have to get more points. BT misses them both. Ducoin controls. Other way, it's Manor. Left corner. Guarded by Tyson. Gives it out. Johnson. Top it. Smith. Double sent at him. Works towards the right sideline. Splits a pair. Melvin picks it off. Melvin gives it up. Tyson. He's in front of the goal. He missed a layup. Melvin gets it back. He scored and he's fouled. Fouls on Smith. It's going to be his second. Melvin shooting one, trailing by nine. Free throw up. Got it. 59-51. Johnson crossover on Melvin into the half court. And a bump on Melvin. Stops the clock, 157 left. They're going to tee up Melvin. And he's going to take a seat. Maynard will shoot the free throws. So that should put Melvin up to three fouls after the personal and the technical. Two shots here, and then Ducoin will have the possession. That just can't happen in this spot. I don't, I don't care if it was minimal and you don't think it was worthy. You can't even put that in that official's head. You can't give him any reason to do it. Now it seems like uh, you're going to need a collapse to have a chance. Manor hits the first. Yeah, I mean, obviously, in the situation you're trying to get back in this ball game, you, you you absolutely can't risk anything and to get a technical right there. You're you're trying to get back in this one. Now it's three two shots from the free throw line. Now you're down ten again, and they have the ball. And like we're saying, even if it's minimal and you're thinking it's not worthy of it, you can't give him any reason to think you're retaliating because you know they just teed up a guy on the coin. They won't need a whole lot to say, like, all right, well, that's worthy of one, too. We're putting an end to all this nonsense. The coin ball, reach in on Frankfurt, 143 left. 61-51, Ducoin. Be Smith at the line. It's Traylon Smith at the line, shooting two. They got Harrell. For his first, Smith hits the free throw. Sixty-two fifty-one, Ducoin. Reminder: seeds come out for the Frankfurt Regional on Thursday, and the pairings, the bracket on Friday. This final game for Frankfurt, the final test for Frankfurt. Until then, Before they know where they'll be playing in the postseason. It's 63-51. Bowers dribbles top. Tyson steps in. Three on the way. Too strong. Rebound Maynard. One and a half left. Could never get that shot going was Tyson here tonight. One of Frankfurt's better jump shooters. Him and Harold couldn't get it going. It was Bowers who actually hit a couple threes. And he was Frankfurt's offense tonight. And Alongside Melvin, but it's hard to win when you're not hitting jump shots, and especially when you're not and the other team is, and that's what's happened. 63-51, 110 left. Frankfurt gets it back after the turnover. Tyson, back Bowers, shot fake. He gets into the paint, up with the right, around and out. Maynard rebound. 
He works middle of the court, hands left to Smith. Walks into the front court, 50 seconds left. Ducoin closing in on a victory over Frankfurt, and that's going to give them a 2-0 record against Frankfurt on the season. Turnover again. Bowers to the goal with the right and missed the layup. DT's there for the cleanup. 29 seconds left, 63-53, and if you want it to sting a little more, Ducoin's 2-0 against you. That's their only two wins in the Mississippi Division. 63-53. Frankfurt trailing by 10 with 29 seconds left. And um, it really goes back to trying to slow down their guy. We said it in the early going. Got to slow him down. They didn't do it. You're running out of room, giving him points on your your stat sheet here. Yeah. Uh, Maynard with 27 points in this game. I mean, it's like. You know, after the first one, you did run out of room. Now that I see it, you got yeah, it off to yeah, the side. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, you know, anybody scoring 27, it's hard to put that many tallies in one box. <laughs> we, but, yeah, I mean, a guy like Maynard, he should have, there should have been a better, you know, I'm not saying there was a game plan, but there was no execution of that game plan if there was one because, you know, he had wide open three-pointer jump shots all night, and he, he really he, he showed his game tonight. 63-53, 29 seconds left. Johnson to throw in. Get it in, Jones. Back Johnson. He skips it ahead, Maynard. They have Wilmington out ahead of the pack, and he wisely just takes it to the corner to run some clock. Now it's out to Smith. Guarded by Goforth, and that might do it. Frankfurt calling off the dogs. 10 seconds left. 63-53 is your final from DuCoin. We'll pause, hear from some of our friends here at Redbirds Live, and then wrap things up. Wallace Industrial Tools and Supplies knows Southern Illinois, located in West Frankfort. They're your Milwaukee Superstore with over 8,000 square feet. Wallace Tools has the largest selection of Milwaukee within a two-hour radius. Find power tools such as drill, saw, lights, shop backs, and more with pricing lower than you'll find anywhere else. Wallace Industrial in West Franklin. IBI Management manages over 2.5 million square feet of industrial storage warehousing and office space in Tennessee, Indianapolis, Ohio, Illinois, and South Carolina with 64 tenants. Please feel free to contact us for any management needed for your property. Feel free to reach out with any questions to Bobby and Iris Cazzotti. With an award-winning body shop right here in West Frankfort, Illinois, Wix is your hometown Chevrolet GMC Chrysler Dodge Ram dealer. Come out and visit us in person or online at gregweeks.com. Your hometown dealership right on the price right off 557. Kids Corral Incorporated celebrating 25 years serving the children and families of Southern Illinois. Owned and operated by Gina King and Kristen Cass. Kids Corral in West Frankfurt. Redbirds Live, brought to you by the partners of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates, including former West Frankfurt High School dual sports standout Lance Brown and fellow West Frankfurt alumni and veteran Matthew Carraway. The law firm of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates are proud members of the West Frankfurt community and proud servants of all of Southern Illinois. Ask Melissa Walden about Shelters Auto, home and life options. Call or text at 618-937-2092. Melissa Walden, Shelter Insurance in West Frankfurt. Contact Power Wash Plus for a free quote on all your residential or commercial pressure washing needs. Professionally operated and fully insured. Call Power Wash Plus at 618-663-2505 for more information. That's Power Wash Plus at 618-663-2505. Hal Insurance is a proud sponsor of Reverend Athletics. Serving West Frankfurt since 1925, we provide auto, home, business, life, and health insurance. How Insurance partners with Auto Owners Insurance Company to handle insurance the right way, the human way. Call Ryan, Jessica, or Susan Patton at 937-4000. Make light work of everything with Honda's top-of-the-line family of Pioneer 1000 side-by-sides. All models sport a best-in-class engine and an exclusive six-speed automatic dual-clutch transmission. Then there's the 1005 models, 
equipped with Honda's quick flip seating that seats up to five passengers. So find your next Honda Pioneer today at Bill Galatich Honda in West Frankfurt. Experience a taste of Mexico at La Fiesta Mexican Restaurant. We have the best food and drinks for the whole family to enjoy. See you tomorrow, amigos. E.R. Brown Furniture has been providing West Frankfurt and Southern Illinois communities quality furniture for 109 years. E.R. Furniture has the largest selection of Lazy Boy furniture and can help you find your next recliner, sofa, or love seat. E.R. Brown Furniture can provide delivery and set up to your home as well. It's E.R. Brown Furniture, downtown West Frankfurt. The city of West Frankfurt is proud to support the students of Frankfurt Community High School. The future is in the youth of our community. Go Redbirds. People's National Bank has been serving the communities of Southern Illinois since 1909. We believe that great customer service along with a wide variety of products will meet all of your banking needs. Come in and check us out today. People's National Bank, member FDIC. McDonald's. Family owned and operated Moreland Bishop McDonald's has 21 locations to serve you. The West Frankfurt Aquatic and Activity Center are proud partners of Redbirds Live. Come check out our heated indoor swimming pool, fitness center, and basketball gym. Stop by for a visit, or you can contact us at 618 937 1665. Final score from Anders Gymnasium in Ducoin Ducoin Indians 63, West Frankfurt Redbirds. 53, and that's the final over here. Welcome you guys in. Post-game show brought to you by IBI Management. Redbirds fall to Ducoin, and they're back on Friday at home against the Benton Rangers. This was their last chance to maybe um, try to uh, impress, to either bump their seating or maybe drop it. Who knows which way it went, but um, this was their last opportunity out there. Seats come out Thursday. Bracket comes out Friday. Let's get to the post-game stat sheet brought to you by the city of West Frankfurt. Start off with the Ducoin Indians. Johnson with four. Jones with six. Wilmington with ten. Smith with 16. And around the scoring for the Indians, Maynard with 27. The Indians had a total of 11 turnovers in this one. Move over to West Frankfurt Redbird side. Jack Harrell with two. Osborne with four, Tyson with five, D.T. Thomas with 12 points, eight rebounds, Brady Melvin, 14 points, six rebounds, and around the scoring off of the Redbirds, Keegan Bowers with 16 points, eight rebounds. Western Redbirds had told us 16 turnovers in this one. Yeah, and they shot eight of 15 at the line. That's not too not too good there. And um, in the first half, three or four, they got there a little bit more in the second half, but five of 11 there in the second half, total of eight of 15. DuCoin didn't go to the line in the first half. Second half, they knocked him down. Large part, Maynard was the guy who was taking him. Ended up as a team 6-7 at the line tonight. So they didn't get there a lot, but they were pretty efficient. And um, I thought they were efficient the whole night you know, in terms of offensively I'm scoring the basketball. 63-53 the win for DuCoin over West Frankfurt. Let's give out a player of the game. That's brought to you by Melissa Walden Shelter Insurance. Uh, player of the game we'll have to go with tonight. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with Keegan Bowers. 16 points, 8 rebounds. I think he was a a really good facilitator out there on offense uh, and having a, a pretty good defensive side. Yeah, you know, just a, a few uh, mental turnovers in there. But other than that, had a really great game tonight and, you know, did what he could to try to keep the Redbirds in this one. Hit a few, hit a few good shots outside the perimeter and, you know, 16 points, 8 rebounds. Keegan Bowers, your player of the game. That's brought to you by Melissa Walton Shelter Insurance. He did. He seemed like their number one option tonight. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's in part with Melvin under the weather a little bit here recently. But he looked like an like an aggressor, and you know he gets a little bit of support. Uh, you know, maybe we're talking about a Frankfurt win right now, and we're talking to coach. But um, you know, they come up short tonight. They got some more opportunities this season, including Friday against your um, your old rivals, the Benton Rangers. And uh, we will have the ladies' senior night the night prior to that this Thursday against Massac County. We'll have the ladies on Saturday. One o'clock tip-off from Benton against the Rangerettes. We'll be on around 10 minutes prior to that. So look for us to go on around 12.50 for that regional quarterfinal. 
Final from DuCoin in Anders Gymnasium. DuCoin Indians 63, West Frankfurt Redbirds 53. We thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you Thursday with us here at Redbirds Live.